It's been a terrible month for severe weather, and that threat continues again today. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. In this video, we're going to talk about how this May, this severe weather season, has been the busiest in more than a decade. And we'll, of course, talk about that continuing threat for severe weather as it pushes to the east on May 27th, with it, which is Memorial Day. And then we'll talk about the tropical update toward the end of this video. In case you missed it, NOAA released its official forecast last week. It's pretty crazy in terms of the numbers. In fact, their busiest initial forecast ever. Before we get into the video, if you do want to stay updated on all things weather, especially as we get ready to head into hurricane season, hit that subscribe button for me and you will stay up to date. Here we go. These are the severe weather uh, reports over the last 48 hours here. And the chapters are in the description if you do want to bounce around to some of the things that we're going to be tracking in this video. All the red little dots there are the tornado reports. All of the white dots represent wind damage reports over the last 48 hours alone. We'll talk more about the month that was coming up in just a second but crazy amount of storm reports a lot of damage and unfortunately a lot of loss of life we are thinking about you guys that were impacted by these devastating storms and again not just the tornadoes the straight line winds have been extremely impressive unfortunately rolling forward i mentioned earlier in the video just off the top here that this is the busiest severe weather season in more than a decade 2011 is going to be really hard to top. Of course, that was Super Outbreak 2 back in the April, the late April of 2011. But we are behind it in 2024 right now. That blue line at the top of your screen here, that is 2011. Again, far away from that. But back down into the second line here, that red line going forward in terms of the amount of tornado warnings issued by all the National Weather Service offices. You see it there coming in. In second place with more than 1900 tornado warnings from january 1st all the way through may 27th so it has no doubt been an extremely active year in terms of uh, the folks at the national weather service the meteorologists at the national weather service issuing those warnings here's another perspective these are all of the highest end anyway of the storm prediction center outlooks from the day one perspective and you see it there every day at least has been that two out of five and more often than not it's been that level three that enhanced risk or higher starting off on may 1st we had an enhanced risk all the way to that first weekend in may and then it was monday may 6th that was one of the high risk days that we had the red boxes that was the 8th the 19th the 21st the 25th and then the 26th those were all moderate risk days, that level four out of five. So to say that there has been significant severe weather risk through the month of May is an understatement. But that is how it looked from a graphical standpoint there, from a calendar standpoint on how busy it has been this severe weather season. That continues today. We at least have another level two out of five risk. This is going to be that slight risk, again, quote unquote slight. But we're going to have the opportunity here as uh, those storms kind of push from uh, west to east for a few tornadoes embedded although today again the 27th if you happen to be watching this after the 27th that's when we are going to see uh that tornado threat go down a little bit but still that damaging wind threat is going to be elevated and still the potential in here as that line of storms gets closer to the coast the opportunity anyway for those uh discrete supercells to form within that line and then produce potentially some tornadoes and again you see it there that brown color the last few days we've been talking about that tornado threat representing that uh, yellow or red that 10 to 15 percent chance with hatch marks in there indicating the potential for those long tracked intense supercells intense thunderstorms that threat at least goes down a little bit but nonetheless that risk is not zero from uh, just to the west of new york city right, city right around scranton into philly and then down into parts of central and southern virginia into eastern north carolina as well that's going to be a relatively speaking highest opportunity for uh to see a quick a brief tornado again we're not talking about the super long tracked tornadoes all right before we get into the tropical portion of this video i want to let you know something that you can sign up for or subscribe for if you are interested in the tropics and staying up to date scan the QR code on the screen that is going to take you to click newsletters and you can sign up for the tropics watch newsletter every Monday 
or as needed, you're going to get a little visit from me in your inbox. And we're going to talk about the tropics kind of in text form there. We'll have some of the video content that we produce in there as well. But you can sign up for free for our Tropics Watch newsletter. And again, we're going to break down the tropics all season long. That's going to be every Monday in hurricane season. And then as needed, if there's something going on, if there's something that you should know about, I'm going to visit your inbox. So again, you can sign up for free by going to clickorlando.com slash newsletters. There's a bunch of newsletters on the page. Just find the one that says Tropics Watch, and then you can subscribe right there just by putting in your email, uh, and then you can join the list, and then, again, we'll hang out in your inbox there. All right, on to the numbers, and you likely have seen this already, but these have been the crazy numbers. Again, this is the busiest, most intense forecast that the uh, folks at NOAA, the meteorologists at NOAA, has ever put out. I know everybody says it. Oh, they say it's going to be active every single year. And again, quite frankly, it has been. Going back to the 2016 season, it has been above average every single season from that point. But to see a forecast like this is pretty crazy, especially from the folks, the meteorologists at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric, Atmospheric Administration, because they are typically on the more conservative side, especially for their initial forecast. So the forecast 17 to 25 named storms in May for the season is pretty crazy. And if you say all oh, they name everything now, then I want to turn your attention to the hurricanes because that takes away at some of those early season or those sloppy looking storms. Hurricanes, no matter what they are, they're not the sloppy ones. You've got to get to 75 miles an hour and they certainly are more organized than some of the ones that are just short lived and named storms that for like six hours or whatever. But there you go. Eight to 13 hurricanes they are forecasting with four to seven of them being major. No matter how you slice it, they are way above where we should be. Average is 14, 7, and 3, and it's in line with the very active, most active ever Colorado State initial forecast that they put out in April. The main reason for that is this continuing to develop La Nina. Look at that. We have the sea surface temperature anomalies starting to turn blue. There are indications that we're going to see this rapidly come on even further. We have more upwelling. We're going to have a surge of the trade winds, it looks like over the next few weeks, which is going to push that warmer water still further towards Australia and allow for more upwelling, that colder water that resides beneath the surface, and that is going to cool the surface more, continuing to allow La Nina to progress. Again, La Nina is the cooling of the waters in the equatorial Pacific, which changes the convective patterns, which promotes rising air in the Atlantic, and it promotes... Uh, less wind shear in the Atlantic. So that is the water, the sea surface temperature anomaly out in that direction. Look at the anomalies locally, though, in the Atlantic. This is absolutely bonkers here. We're talking about late July-like water temperatures in the main development region of the Atlantic in late May. You see it here, too. Look at these anomalies. These are going to be equate to about 5 to 6 degrees uh, Fahrenheit above normal. Just insane in terms of the water temperature now. We do have a relatively speaking area of cooler waters uh, right around Bermuda and then just to the west and northwest of the Gulf Stream. We talked about this in an earlier video that that difference in temperature can actually enhance the season. That is a signal that you do not want to see at this time with the cooler than normal water temperatures around Bermuda because is that is going to focus up thunderstorm and development here and when the storms are focused going to be more consolidated they're going to have the opportunity anyway to become organized and that's something again you never want to see at this stage in the game but just one of the three factors there the la nina the crazy warmth that's building here and then through the gulf and caribbean and then with a the cooler than normal signal right here all of that is just arguing for that crazy above normal season unfortunately and that is why you are seeing the ridiculous numbers from some of the seasonal forecast outlets including NOAA uh, over the past week or so that would argue again for that more active than normal season all right guys if you happen to find this content helpful hit that subscribe button we talk all things weather here especially as we get into hurricane season love to have you guys on board post in the comments where you're tuning in from Click Orlando.com slash newsletters if you want to stay updated on the tropics all season long. I'll visit your inbox every single Monday in hurricane season, and again, as needed, and of course, on the channel. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll catch you soon.